Today is Friday, April 21st. We'll tell you about severe storms that spread over 1,000 miles and where they're headed next. Also, an update in the criminal case against actor Alec Baldwin. And why SpaceX is celebrating the launch of the world's most powerful rocket, even though it exploded soon after takeoff. Plus, one of the best meteor showers of the year is happening now. Twitter is going through what's seen as a shift in power. And a major sports team is leaving the city they've been playing in for more than half a century, where they're headed next. Those stories and more news to know in today's episode. Welcome, welcome to The Newsworthy. All the day's news in around 10 minutes. Fast, fair, fun, and on the go. I'm Erica Mandy. Thanks so much for being here. You ready? Let's do this. Well, this spring storm season is shaping up to be a rough one. The latest severe weather outbreak brought several reported tornadoes and softball-sized hail to Oklahoma, Texas, Kansas, Nebraska, and Iowa. Oklahoma saw the worst of it. Sadly, three people died there, and dozens more were hurt. Homes, businesses, schools, and a hospital were also damaged. And even more severe storms are expected to impact the southern U.S. into at least tomorrow. Today, the biggest threats are large hail and damaging winds, as well as some flooding rain from Texas to Louisiana and Mississippi, and even parts of Alabama. Tomorrow, severe thunderstorms are possible from Florida to Virginia. And once again, there could be a few tornadoes. Then after the system moves through, people will be left with some cooler weather to close out the weekend. Violence keeps getting worse in the eastern African country of Sudan. And with that, reports say the U.S. is preparing to evacuate its embassy there. Already, the U.S. State Department says one American citizen has died in Sudan this week, though it did not go into any more details. It comes after a marked U.S. diplomatic convoy also came under fire this week, though no one was hurt from that. It's estimated that about 19,000 American citizens are still in Sudan right now, as the Sudanese army has been battling a militia group for control of the country. And it's not easy to get out, since the international airport has been the target of intense fighting and Sudan's airspace is closed. Still, reports say the Pentagon is preparing to at least evacuate the U.S. embassy staff. The Biden administration confirms some military forces are being pre-positioned nearby just in case they're needed. And it's telling all Americans in Sudan to shelter in place for now. Senior U.S. officials are also in contact with the military leaders on both sides of this fight, and they're pushing for a ceasefire to be continued. The biggest, most powerful rocket ever built captured the world's attention this week when it lifted off from South Texas but it exploded in the sky just minutes later, about 24 miles into the air. So it was lost over the Gulf of Mexico before it actually reached orbit. Still, the launch of SpaceX's Starship is being celebrated as historic. SpaceX CEO Elon Musk has said even clearing the launch pad should be taken as a huge milestone. He congratulated his team and tweeted, quote, learned a lot for next test launch in a few weeks. No one was actually on board when the explosion happened, but after more rebuilds and more test launches, The goal is to eventually use Starship to send NASA's astronauts to the moon as early as 2025. Then the long-term goal is to carry passengers to Mars. The Lyrid meteor shower is expected to peak this weekend. The Lyrids are known for their fast and bright meteors, and you might be able to see as many as 100 an hour, including the occasional bright flash called a fireball. But that is rare. Most years, it's more like 20 meteors an hour. Though it can still be pretty impressive. And this year, it's really expected to be a good one since a bright moon will not be outshining the display. NASA says the best time to see the show will be about 10.30 local time tomorrow night. Though it will last until dawn. You don't need any kind of special equipment like telescopes or binoculars. In fact, it's actually best without that stuff since the secret is to take in as much of the sky as possible. Well, this weekend, there's a good reason to get outside and soak in some nature if you can. Tomorrow is Earth Day. For the last 53 years, people around the world have used the occasion to celebrate and help protect our planet. Many communities come together to clean up litter, plant trees, go green in some other way, or simply reflect in all of Earth's beauty. There are also a lot of eco-friendly deals out there this weekend. EarthDay.org has highlighted some of the best ways to observe the holiday, both virtually and in person. We posted a link to the specifics on today's episode notes. All right, we have more news for you still coming up. But first, I want to tell you about Soul Organics Bedding. They were our very first sponsor years ago, and I still love sleeping on their sheets today. So I'm partnering with them again right in time for the Earth Day sale. And it's connected to Earth Day because Soul Organics only uses suppliers that are certified experts in sustainable fibers. I also appreciate that the company prioritizes fair labor practices. 
Plus, my husband and I have personally found their sheets are one of our favorites to sleep on. They are soft, breathable, and high quality. So I've created a special link for our listeners, thenewsworthy.com slash sheets. Use that link along with the code EARTH between now and Wednesday to get an extra 40% off linen bedding for Earth Day. That's thenewsworthy.com slash sheets. Also, I want to recommend another podcast called Daily Affirmations Meditation for Women. It's a great way to bring more calm, positivity, and inspiration to your day, even when your day feels hectic, since you can just listen while on the go. I found taking these short moments to yourself to focus on one thing you want more of in your life really goes a long way. So add it to your podcast playlist for your morning, lunch break, or commute by searching for Daily Affirmations for Women on your favorite podcast player. That's Daily Affirmations for Women. Muslims all around the world are now marking an end to the holy month of Ramadan, and they're celebrating Eid al-Fitr. It's one of the holiest occasions on the Islamic calendar, and the name is Arabic for the celebration of breaking the fast. That makes sense since during Ramadan, Muslims don't eat or drink anything during the daylight hours, so they can focus on reflection and prayer. So now that it's over, they're celebrating by feasting with friends and family. Some also mark the occasion by feeding and helping those in need. The movie Rust officially resumed production this week without the cinematographer who was shot and killed on set 18 months ago. And on the same day, actor Alec Baldwin's lawyers announced the felony charges he had been facing over the shooting have been dropped. Remember, Baldwin and another crew member were both charged with involuntary manslaughter. Baldwin, because he was holding the gun that went off, and the armorer, since she was supposed to be in charge of that gun. Well, prosecutors confirmed yesterday they decided to dismiss charges against Baldwin since, quote, new facts were revealed that demand further investigation. They didn't give any more details besides that, but they did make it clear the decision does not necessarily absolve Baldwin of all responsibility and charges could be refiled. There's no change to the case against the set's armorer who is pleading not guilty. And her lawyers say, quote, the truth about what happened will come out. An investigation is still underway. BuzzFeed News is shutting down. BuzzFeed will still exist, but it's doing away with its news division as part of a wider effort to turn the struggling media group around. While you may think of BuzzFeed as only its entertainment-style headlines or quizzes, its news division has done some serious journalism and even won a Pulitzer Prize. The CEO blames some rough years for shutting it down now, starting with the COVID-19 pandemic and ending with a loss in digital advertising. Now he says it's just financially impossible to keep BuzzFeed News going. Moving forward, BuzzFeed will only have one news brand, HuffPost, which it acquired a few years ago. This is just the latest big media company to announce cuts. In recent weeks, NPR cut staff and decided to cancel four podcasts. The Washington Post got rid of its Sunday magazine and a handful of other newsroom jobs. And ESPN and Insider have also announced layoffs. You might have noticed a change on Twitter recently. No more blue check marks for certain high-profile accounts. This week, the social media giant started removing the checks the company's last leadership team handed out as sort of a status symbol to people they verified as being authentic and notable. Now Twitter's new team wants the verification only for those who pay at least $8 a month for Twitter Blue. Already, many famous people like Oprah Winfrey, Tom Cruise, and Kim Kardashian have lost their check marks, as well as public figures like Bill Gates and Pope Francis. Some celebrities don't seem too bothered by it, like rapper Ice-T, who said it was a sad moment in society to see so many people caring about little blue checks. But others aren't happy, like Shaq and Chrissy Teigen, since they're worried about being impersonated and their fans falling for it. Imposters are seemingly taking advantage already. For example, just a few hours after former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton lost her verification, another account posing as her with the same profile picture announced a run for presidency. The real Clinton never tweeted that. Twitter CEO Elon Musk sticks by the new changes as he's criticized the old checks as a symbol of classism. And while the new system means anyone can pay for a blue check mark, it does have an identity verification process in place. It looks like sports fans in Oakland, California, are about to be disappointed again. Just three years after the NFL's Raiders left Oakland for Las Vegas, MLB's athletics appear ready to follow them. The A's say they signed a binding agreement to buy land near the Las Vegas Strip for their new $1.5 billion ballpark. The team's president says the A's hope to break ground by next year and move into their new home by 2027, becoming just the second MLB team to change cities in the last 50 years. And the MLB commissioner says they have his support. This comes after more than 50 years of playing in Oakland. But the ballpark there has a lot of issues, and the team's lease expires after the 2024 season. 
Once the A's leave town, Oakland will be left without any major sports franchises. So fans will likely look across the bay to teams like the San Francisco Giants, San Francisco 49ers, and Golden State Warriors. That's it for the main news today, so now it's time for Feel Good Friday, when we bring you one extra feel-good or positive news story before the weekend. And today, we are talking about one teacher in Canada whose lessons go way beyond math, science, and reading. But first, thanks to our sponsor, ZocDoc. If you've been wondering about a health issue for a while, maybe you've asked some friends about it, it might be time to get an expert's opinion, even if it's for nothing else but peace of mind. Well, thousands of medical professionals from a variety of specialties are available to search and find and book on ZocDoc, who are able to give you the expert care you need. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. When you're not feeling your best, finding a doctor should not take up all of your energy. Millions of people use ZocDoc to find the right doctor for them. So book an appointment with a few taps in their app, and hopefully soon enough, you can start to feel better. Go to ZocDoc.com newsworthy and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C, ZocDoc.com newsworthy. ZocDoc.com newsworthy. Okay, now back to Feel Good Friday. Jennifer Thiessen is a pretty special third grade teacher. Several years ago, she was looking at report cards and realized she didn't just want to grade kids on the curriculum, she wanted to look at their life skills too. So Thiessen and a fellow teacher decided to assign their students the Kindness Project. The first year, the two classes made cupcakes at home and sold them for $1 each during a series of bake sales at school. Then they used the proceeds to buy small gifts like coffees and flowers and handed them out to strangers near the school. Thiessen said the students seemed to enjoy it so much, she decided to make it a yearly activity. On top of giving, classes spend time reading books about kindness. They also write and decorate cards that explain their project. And sometimes classes put their own spins on it. For example, during the lonely days of the pandemic, one group of kids decided to put together care packages for frontline workers. This year, some passed out dog treats at local parks. Others did a forest cleanup. And the list goes on. Thiessen says her favorite part is that all kids can be good at it, and she loves showing them what they're capable of. All right, we'll be back tomorrow with our special edition Saturday episode. We're talking about the future of affirmative action, as the U.S. Supreme Court is set to make a big decision about whether universities can consider race in college admissions. Then join us again Monday for your next news roundup. For now, thank you so much for listening, and have a great weekend. 